Hello, my beautiful souls. It's Catherine. I hope you're all well. Let's travel together to a world of myths and tales. All you have to do is relax and follow me. Today, I want to share with you an ancient Greek myth. It is about Psyche and Eros. This is a story of true love and how it can overcome all obstacles. Let's get started. In ancient Greece lived the princess Psyche with her parents and her older sisters. She was so beautiful that every man desired her. When she was leaving her house, people were throwing flowers on the street for her to walk on. Men from every corner of the land would offer her the most amazing gifts. Silk tunics and jewelry made of gold with sapphires and emeralds on them would arrive daily at her house. The temples and altars of the goddess of beauty, Aphrodite, or in Greek, Aphrodite, were abandoned, since every man was now worshipping Psyche's beauty. Aphrodite was very angry. She was jealous and she hated the young girl with all her heart. She felt there was nothing she could do and she was furious. Psyche, however, was not pleased with all the attention she was getting from men because even though they would desire her, no one dared to ask her in marriage. So, while her older sisters were finding love and they were getting happily married with princes, she was left all alone. Secretly, deep into her heart, she was wishing for her beauty to go away, since for her, it was only causing pain and loneliness. After a lot of thought and even more jealousy, Aphrodite found a way to punish the girl for stealing from her men's attention and admiration. So, she sent from Mount Olympus her son Eros to target with his arrow Psyche and make her fall in love with the ugliest man on earth. Eros, of course, obeyed his mother and found the young girl, a knight, sitting alone at her balcony. Psyche was gazing at the beautiful sky, the shining stars and the moon trying to find some comfort from her despair in the beauty of the night. As Eros got closer to be able to hit her, he looked at her. He was hit by his own arrows. He fell madly in love with her and wanted to take her as his wife. To achieve that, he used the power he had over mortals. He met with her father and ordered him to tell his daughter to wear a wedding dress and then to take her at the top of a high mountain where she would be eaten by a monster. Psyche's father was devastated. He couldn't do that to his child. But he had no option. He had to obey the God's order. So, 
He said to Saiki to wear a wedding dress and follow him. The girl was confused. She felt happy that she would finally got married, but at the same time, she didn't even know the groom. As they were climbing the mountain, her father was silent. He would not answer any questions, but he was walking slowly because he didn't want to leave his daughter. When she arrived at the top of the mountain, instead of a monster, Zephyrus, the west wind, appeared and drifted the girl away to an amazing palace. She was living now in that palace where invisible servants would satisfy her every wish. From juicy grapes and rich red wine, to silver and golden jewelry and beautiful tunics made of silk. She could have anything her heart desired. Every sunset, watching the sky changing colors, she would bathe and lay on her silk bedsheets. When the sky was deep blue, full of stars, an invisible lover, would go to her. He initiated her to the joys of love. Psyche and Eros lived for a long time this way and they were really happy. But at some point she felt homesick and wanted to see her family again. Her invisible lover allowed her to go But he said two conditions. She would not reveal the secret of the life she was living and she would not try to look at him. She was very pleased to see her family again. There was a big feast to honor her return and when they ate and drank, she and her sisters went for a walk in the garden. They were sitting on the last green grass, talking, and her happiness was more than obvious. Her sisters observed that and pressed her to reveal her secret. Psyche wanted to share her good fortune with them because she thought they would be happy for her. However, as soon as they heard her, Jealous who filled their hearts. They advised her to hide and learn her lover's identity, for he could be a terrible monster. Saigi did what her sisters told her, because she thought they were looking out for her. And so, when she returned at the palace, as night came, Instead of laying on her bed, she hid in the next room and saw Eros before he had become invisible. She was dazzled by his beauty. But Eros immediately realized what she had done. She had broken his conditions and he abandoned her. Psyche was inconsolable. She was looking for arrows everywhere. Aphrodite, still angry and jealous at the girl, wanted to torture her one more time. When she approached her to try and calm her anger, she ordered her to do the most inconceivable tasks in order to prove her love. She had to classify an immense quantity of all kinds of wheats and beans. She had no idea where to begin, but little ants helped her do so. The goddess understood that she had help, so she then gave her the command to bring to her a tuft from a wild golden-haired sheep. 
a reed that grew on the river bank, helped the desperate girl this time. Her sorrow made the animals and the elements of nature to want to assist her on the difficulties she was going through. So the reed advised her to wait until the wild sheep would rest under the shadows of the trees after a day under the hot sun, and only then go and pick up their hair from the branches. But Aphrodite was still not satisfied. Psyche should now go on a high mountain and fill a crystal bowl with black water from a spring of the river of the underworld. An eagle, who was a dear friend of Eros, guided her this time. The task was not easy. Aphrodite had placed all kinds of traps along the way. Eros was watching all the ordeals the poor girl was going through for his sake. His heart was softened and he was convinced for her love. He flew to the god of gods, Zeus, and begged him to approve their marriage. Zeus kindly agreed to his request. He then gathered all gods and goddesses to let them know of his decision. He first declared that Eros should stop fooling around and start acting like a real partner. Then he made it clear to Aphrodite that her son had made a good choice because Psyche would become a goddess. He asked Hermes, the messenger of gods, to bring the girl to Olympus. Their wedding was much celebrated and so Eros and Psyche were together at last. They had a daughter named Idone, or in Greek, Idone. Her name means pleasure. Until next time, my beautiful souls, sending you love, Catherine.